welcome back to my channel my name is Eva Marumo if you are new here welcome don't forget to press the subscribe button and click on the bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my uploads but if it's not your first time joining me welcome don't forget to subscribe and follow me on instagram i'm eva marumo on facebook i'm eva marumo on twitter i'm eva marumo as well so guys in this channel we do Botswana entertainment news Botswana breaking news and we also do vlogging so yesterday guys in the community tab i did ask you what is it that you want to see in this channel because i said this week it's all about you guys what you want to see in my channel so yes one gorgeous name by the one gorgeous lady rather by the name otalia jordan did mention that she loved this gorgeous lady we're looking at right now and this lady you guys is called kumo kwadira or miss gk's so guys this lady is a radio personality and television personality but she did do a whole video last year telling us who she was where she from and everything about herself so i've decided to include the video here so that you guys could actually go ahead and hear it from the horse's mouth but during all that she did left out left out a rather one aspect that she is in a relationship allegedly okay let me use the word allegedly that she is in a relationship with one handsome guy who is also a radio and television personality you guys these guys have been like in a relationship for the longest time or period of time but they never really get told us like go out to say we are dating but the look of things you guys they are dating and they have been dating for the longest period now so they work together they travel together they do a whole lot of everything together but they decided to just not say we are in a relationship rather say they are just friends so i don't know what you're thinking do comment below about any video anything that you want me to talk about because like i said today it's all about you this week rather so i'll see you guys tomorrow hopefully if you said something that you want me to say so i'll see you guys tomorrow bye <laughs> Hi guys, so today's my birthday. Yes, I'm 30 years old. My mom reminded me last week that in May to umutu na kumongwanak, haonangwa, na hawainya. But anyways, we'll talk about that a little bit later. How do I feel? First of all, I'm happy because I'm 30 years old. God gave me 30 years of existence and I'm truly grateful. I'm nervous um, because I don't know what the future holds. I'm disappointed obviously because you know I've made some huge mistakes some of them I regret even though life isn't really about regrets but yeah I regret some of the decisions I made back in the day and I'm not where I really want to be also COVID-19 has sort of slowed us down but over and above everything I'm happy that I'm alive in 2020 it's a crazy year but I'm glad I get to spend it with all of you so I'm gonna share my story um I look back and you know, I have mixed emotions. I'm grateful for everything that has happened. I'm thankful for my parents, you know, I'm thankful for my mom. I'm proud of myself because I've always been a dreamer. I'm an overachiever. I remember when I was 14 years old, a Team Yo TV, I don't know if you're with me. Like Obama and Disa, you know, Shade. I used to watch them on TV and back in the day I had a stuttering problem. I was like, you know what, one day, one day I'm going to be a huge superstar. My sisters would laugh at me, my mom would laugh at me. And then, you know, fast forward, I went to college in Malaysia, thanks to the government of Botswana. I went to Malaysia as an 18 year old. So naive, first time on a plane, <laughs> I know, right? I get to Malaysia, get to this beautiful Asian country, so developed and that's when everything changed. I, I met Ms. GK's in Kuala Lumpur. I started getting my notes because I've always been a writer. I write everything down so I don't forget. And then this is when I ask myself so many questions. What do you want to do in life? When you were young, you wanted to be on TV. Is this still an idea? Is it something you still want to pursue in the future? Then I was studying marketing, business computing, specializing in um, e-marketing. And I'm like, yeah, I have four years to study. I'm going to have some free time. So let me start working on my other, other things, things that I really want to pursue when I get to Botswana. A friend of mine, Patience Ineling, 
started talking to me about my dreams, you know, because we used to talk about what is it that we want to achieve in the future. She's like, you know what? You've got a great voice, actually. I could see my local shoot that my sister was talking about on TV. Get on that bar. We start shooting at events. I'd bring my little mic and my and my squad, 3KT's Entertainment. Someone goes about to buy a beer. How they feeling about this? Little did I know this was preparing me for this life that I'm living now. Come on, say get on that bar. Rukum Molong, Rukum Mid Valley. We interview, you know, cab drivers were interviewing Malaysians, and you know, this was just me trying to prep myself because I wasn't studying anything media related. 2012, I come to Botswana, and I come back with this degree, but I want to pursue something else. I come back as a 22-year-old. I'm like, yeah, what's been happening in Botswana? <laughs> Is Ms. GK ready for all of this? You know, through it all, I just kept on praying for just for God to really guide me through it all. I really want everything that I do. I want it to be in alignment with God's timing, because God's timing is always perfect. And then, by the grace of God, I started off with property for you. <laughs> I remember <laughs> my property for you days. Because I got to do it anyway. So then, property for you was the beginning of this brand, Ms. GKs, right? And then, 2013 October, my mother. Where now I'm going to order the news on TV. Can you go to the presenter or go RB2? Or go with the whole confirm and then apply. I'm like, there you go, mother. And then I start applying. I was called for an interview. I had to convince RB2 management that you know what? I might not have a degree in marketing, but I'm going to be the greatest asset. I'm going to be the greatest asset. And I got my job. I got it. 2013 October, my first time on air. Let me tell you something about the power of spoken word. When I was 14. I told my family that I was going to be a television presenter. When I was in Malaysia, I used to tell my friends, "Oh, guys, can I get an uncle? But I get no music kids. I get an uncle, but I am going to be a Lebonza." Ne, my Twitter profile, upcoming TV personality, upcoming radio personality. Little did I know, but I'm glad that the four years I spent in Malaysia, I used them wisely. I got to learn a lot about TV production, TV presenting. I used to present in church and host, you know, events back in Malaysia. I had my own media company with my friends, and I was able to, you know, learn my interviewing skills back in the day. So I got my job, and then I got an offer from Ah, I'm going to offer it for you. I'm like, oh hey now, <laughs> and then I just fell in love with the radio. I fell in love with the radio. Then now I was doing both TV and radio, and then at some point in time. I was like, I think I'm ready to start my NGO. And whilst I was in uni, I had a like a file in my laptop titled "Who Am I?" I'm like, hey, you know, kind of used to write a lot about who am I, issues of self that comes from the fact that I, I grew up, you know, the way I grew up was just a bit funny. I was bullied almost all my life, so really, <laughs> thank you guys, because now I'm strong. And I started writing some stuff down about who am I. I thought, God, maybe one day. I'm going to be this huge influential person and I'm going to help those kids, you know, who want to be something but they're so scared because other kids are bullying them or maybe they've got issues of self, they've, you know, confidence issues. They can't even present in front of 30 people. I'm going to be their voice. So I started writing down a plan, NGO, this big NGO called Who Am I? So December 2015, I reopened that file. Man, Those were beautiful ideas. I'm like, that's it. This is how I pick up the pieces. 2016 January started off with a beautiful campaign. Who are you? Called a few of my friends, and boom, people started knowing about who am I. One to one, I'm visiting schools. I'm having projects, breakfast sessions with women. I'm having tea parties. I'm having poetry nights. And then who am I? Took me to Namibia in 2019. I flew on the 18th of June 2019. I collaborated with an, an NGO called Afrika Namibia, and we visited. A couple of orphanages. I went to a couple of high schools in Namibia just to learn and understand the issues that are faced by young people living in Windhoek, Namibia. So I had a really great time. And then there was who am I? And then one day, I was like, there you go, Kumo. You've always wanted to be on TV. You've always wanted to be on radio. You've always wanted to have an NGO. There's something missing. You need to be rich, girl. So there comes entrepreneurship. What do you want to do when you grow up? How are you gonna make money? Turn my brand into a business. And then I love fashion. I love clothes. I'm like, I'm gonna have my own fashion line one day. I look back at all these years. I'm 30 years old. I'm a television presenter. I'm a radio personality. 
I'm a corporate MC. I'm a voiceover artist. Who am I is growing, my little baby. I host a primetime slot on radio. I've done some really cool TV shows. I've hosted a lot of live shows. Man, God is great. God is amazing. Little did I know. You know when you're young, you just see these things, but they don't really sink in. But years later, you're like, wow, this was me. 10, 20 years late, earlier, saying this is who I want to become. So I'm happy. I'm happy that I am Miss GKs. I'm happy that I get to do what I love every single day. I have bad days. Trust me, it's important. I wanted to quit because I had a plan of just being on radio because I loved it. I had a plan of being on TV. I didn't know that this comes with a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, so um, here I am. I think I'm so I think people should call me Kumokwadi, not Mujikis. Mujikis in Lamu Lamu Gala, Lamu her 20s, but now I'm 30 years old. Um, last year, 2019, towards the end of 2019, we found out that my mom has a rare form of cancer called CMML, and everything changed for me. You know, sometimes God can just humble you, um, bring about certain situations that bring you closer to Him. I think that is when everything changed. I started feeling bad. I was mad at myself for not calling more often, for not checking up on her, for not giving her the love that she deserves. And that really changed. And she's now my number one priority. We're trying to adjust as a family. You know, she's not as loud as she used to be. She's not as happy as she used to be. She's just adjusting to the new changes, having to live with this condition. And um, yeah, we've been really strong for her. You know, we have days, I have days where I'm just really sad. I have days where I'm just, where I'm happy. I have days where I have questions. I question God as to what's going on. Why is my mom going through something like this? But then I remember, you know what? Everything really happens for a reason. For the fact that she's still alive, that's good enough for me. And every single time I wake up and I'm alive, I'm like, thank you, God. When I get to call in the morning and she's in pain, but because she's still here, I'm like, thank you, God, still. So a lot has changed for me. I've grown, I'm more wiser now, <laughs> I'm less emotional, and really I am focusing on what's important. If you're listening to me, if you're watching this, and you're in your 30s and you're asking yourself too many questions, that, oh no, I failed this, I haven't achieved so and so, that's okay. That's okay, you can always start over. I look forward to the future. I've done my bit. Um, I've done almost every other show on TV. I've done every other show on radio. Who Am I is growing. I wanna give Who Am I more attention and the love that it deserves. I wanna collaborate with a lot of NGOs across the world. So I look forward to that. And now it's time for me to own my own content create my own content and make a lot of money so a big shout out to my new media partner industry media so i look forward to that um i, I want to spend more time behind the scenes now and you know make way for my bonzas that are coming up but i'm happy i'm 30 years old i'm not where i really want to be but i'm glad that i've i've, I've achieved quite a lot of course i mean here and there i feel sad that ah cool more made to air eh. But you know, it's life, we can't be perfect, we make mistakes, we learn from them, and I'm so happy. Happy birthday to myself. I look forward to so many great things. I look forward to some things I cannot tell you. You just have to stay tuned to my social media and get to, you know, appreciate what I do. I wanna thank everybody that has contributed to, you know, the growth of Ms. GKs. I've worked with a lot of amazing people. I won't be able to mention a lot of them, um, all of them, but please do <laughs> forgive me. Um, starting off with my glam squad, Gabby Soikea, she's amazing. Gwen Isaacs, Mimiri Johnson, Rhea Stry Photography, Honna, Koju Lee, uh, people that make sure that I look good all the time, Kuri, Keno Custom Suits, Lolo, LT Peculiar. You know, I've worked with quite a lot of designers, I've worked with a lot of makeup artists, I've worked with a lot of corporates, and I just wanted to say thank you so much. It's been one hell of a journey, but it was definitely worth it everything worth having it's worth fighting for so keep fighting keep believing in yourself you're gonna have bad days and good days but in the midst of it all be happy peace love and happiness to you and happy birthday to me